This is the sixth video in a series on how to use Model Builder to automate geoprocessing tasks. So far, in the previous videos, we've assembled a model that will take Boston 311 data, map it out, and then aggregate it by neighborhood, and calculate a series of indices, and then plot out those, or produce maps of those indices using a consistent symbology. The model can be run by opening it and uh, hitting the Run button. In fact, you can, after you've saved all the changes, you can close it, and that model is accessible in the toolbox, which is saved, in this case, in my geodatabase, or it could be a folder as well. Um, again, to access it, I would right-click on it and choose Edit, and that will allow me to um, access it in the window from here. Of course, running it from this, running it this way is a little cumbersome. You can, in fact, run this tool just by double-clicking on it in the toolbox, sort of like you would any other tool in our toolbox um, or, or, or scripts that might be already preset. So if I double click on it, what happens is it comes up with a dialog window and it says this tool has no parameters and if I hit OK, it'll, it'll run through the model as it's set up. Um, and this um, has two uh, shortcomings to it, of course. That means that the model always runs through the same data, which seems uh, kind of pointless. And two, um, the output actually will not appear in the table of contents because we actually have to prepare the model to, so that the output will show up in the table of contents. So in order to do that, we have to parameterize um, some of the input for the model. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to be able to double click on the tool and have it prompt the user to specify the input file, the, the Boston 31 data that we want to map or, or, or model, and then uh, push the output as a series of symbolized layers into the table of contents. So to do that, we're going to have to do a couple of things. One is that we're going to have to we're going to have to edit the model, and we're going to need to set the parameters. But we're also going to have to control the the output um, and how it displays. So let's set a parameter first. So I'm going to scroll over to the beginning of my model, and what I want it to do is I want it to ask me for the specific table that's going to be input into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this variable here and I'm going to designate it as a model parameter. And what that means is that it's going to prompt me for um, to specify that um, um, that input. So I'm going to save the model here and then I'm going to close it. And now when I double click on this tool, it's going to prompt me for to specify the input table. Um, now this isn't very intuitive here because it just says the name of the file that I originally set. So what I want to do is I want to rename that variable so that it's very obvious to the user what it's asking for. So I'm going to go back into the model and edit it. And I'm going to change the name of this variable. I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to say Austin 311 input file. Okay, and in addition, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to eliminate or delete the current path. And what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that there's nothing already in there. So now I'm going to save it, and now when I go back to my model, if I double click on it, you can see that it has a more intuitive title asking for the input, and now I can navigate to specify the input file. Um, if I had left the default um, path in there, it would, that would always show up as an option. But I don't want to do that because I want the user to actually think about what they're going to input into there. Um, now the, la the second thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to edit that model again and ensure that the output actually shows up in the table of contents. So I'm going to scroll to the far end of the model and I'm going to tweak the um, feature layer output, the symbolized feature layer output over here on the far end. Um, currently, if you want items to be added to the display in the table of contents, when you're working from the model builder window, like in here, you simply choose add the display and those items are automatically added to the display. But that will not happen uh, when you're working from the, when you initiate the model from the tool dialog box, meaning from our catalog. So in order to control that, you have to um, parameterize these items. Now what that means is that uh, the model builder will only output items to the table of contents that are parameters. The problem is that if I make these 
parameters, what's going to happen is that the tool um, dialog box will ask me to specify this output, and I don't want that to be revealed to the user. Instead, what I want to happen is I just simply want it to output three layers that are properly symbolized into the table of contents. So the way that you work around that is you use another tool that's native to Model Builder, and this is called a Collect Values tool. So under the Insert menu at the top, we're going to choose Model Only Tools, and then we're going to choose this Collect Values tool. So this Collect Values tool uh, does kind of like what it sounds like. It actually collects the values, the output from other processes into a list, and then it can output that list to uh, any other destination to another tool. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take those inputs and give them to Collect Values. And then we're going to specify that the output values is itself a model parameter which we add to the display. And this will ensure that because this is parameterized, it will be output. But the nice thing is this item will not be um, will not show up in the dialog window when the user uses it. So I'm going to save the model and I'm going to run it directly from here by double clicking on it and you can see that all it asks me for is the input file. So I'm going to navigate to my file to my uh, directory where I've kept all my files and this time I'm going to grab the last file, the 2016, just to show you how it works with data which I haven't run before. Okay, and you see the path right there and I'm going to let the model run which might take a minute because there is a lot of data in here and a lot of processing. And now we can see how the output is created. We have each of our properly symbolized data for the 2016 data. So you can see how smoothly the model runs now. And so any user can repeatedly just simply access the tool from catalog by double clicking on it. And every time it'll prompt you to input the data that you need. And you can run it repeatedly and allow the user to select the data that they want at any given time. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can add a little extra element to it so that we can control the naming of the output files that are created.